Genghis Khan, born as Temujin, known as the Universal Leader, founded the world's second largest empire with radical philosophies and concepts. His grandson, Kublai Khan, further expanded its physical frontiers and trade. And the Mongols are known for their ferocity, power, and communicative skills. However, they are often overlooked when it comes to inventions, including new military tactics like arrow storms to compass a bow, and more. Although one of the most important inventions was the stirrup. The stirrup opened up many possibilities, figuratively and literally, for the Mongols. It is still used by multiple horseback riders today. From stratagem to horseback riding, and also expanding the step frontier, the stirrup had a long list of advantages. Let's understand why and how it all played out. There has always been conflict between historians on who invented the stirrup. It is likely the Avars created it, but the Mongols are credited for spreading the use of the tool. Coincidentally, it is also said that the Mongols are descendants of the Avars who have died out. This also explains why the Mongols used real stirrups before anyone else was working. Anywho, the earliest depiction of the stirrup was on a seal from India back in 150 Common Era. Even though the stirrup was only used for the big toe rather than the entire foot, it's the closest portrayal of modern stirrup that historians have seen. There have also been engravings found what this stirrup was in India from 200 Common Era. They seem to illustrate a long rope that acts as a footrest in an L shape. However, both finds were nowhere nearly as helpful as the stirrup. Not only on seals, but they have been illustrated in other places too like statues and dolls. And drawings. It is likely that the first stirrups were made of leather. These small leather circles developed into a wooden object layered with metal. And then the stirrup developed into metal loops. As time went on, historical records started noting the Mongol secret weapon. These accounts vary from a song general's notes to Marco Polo's famed journals. Polo said they never let themselves get into regular melee, but keep perpetually riding around and shooting into the enemy. The combination of the Mongols' expertise in horseback riding and unmatchable archery training became even more dangerous as the stirrup allowed them to rotate in any direction and shoot from any position. The rider was less likely to fall and more likely to attack using full force. And with all these benefits, the stirrup sounds too good to be true. There had to be some disadvantage. Well, there was. When using the stirrup, transferring the rider's weight into one spot causes back, back towards the force. That's where the saddle came in. Not only did this saddle prevent sores as a tweed cloth could distribute weight evenly, but it also kept the rider from falling back and forward while the horse was galloping. With the addition of the stirrup, there were two other components that led the Mongols campaigns that worked so great. Mongolian horses. Mongol horses were short and strong, and more importantly, they had stamina. These horses were unimaginably durable, each shoulder having anywhere from 5 to 16 and without stirrups, it was difficult to stabilize and move while using weapons. Mongolian Archery Archery training began from a young age with small mammals as target. As they got older, daily life involved more hunting. Slowly but surely, shooting became a sixth sense. Without the stirrup, it was extremely hard to aim and shoot while the horse was moving. Since Western enemies such as Greeks and Russians preferred to fight on foot, battling the Mongols who had unmatchable speed, strength, and accuracy, accompanied with the gargantuan height difference, became a nightmare. The stirrup had also given them unprecedented speed. This allowed them to travel a whopping 60 to 100 miles a day, which was unheard of at that time. And along with shortened time on the road, riding became much more comfortable too. The Mongols had an enormous well-trained cavalry, so how did they use the boon of the stirrup to their advantage? The Khans and other generals started devising tactics. For instance, a variation of the infamous retreat. By using the smaller unit, the enemy is tricked into attacking, therefore falling into a state of weakness. However, while fleeing, 
the archer stand up and turn around to shoot. Without the stirrup, this tactic would be virtually impossible. Stirrups are still used today. For most riders, riding without stirrups is so-called torture. Now, stirrups are often made out of metal, the material changing based on the cost. These are stirrups made out of iron, which is the standard material. And these are stirrups made of nickel, which tend to be cheaper. There are also different types of stirrups, including the standard and safety stirrup. Without stirrups, especially with various horses and the ways to ride them, riding becomes really difficult, especially without training. Many horseback riders thank the unknown creator of the stirrup today, and will hopefully appreciate the Mongols for introducing the tool to the world. The stirrup created a frontier in military and warfare technology. New tactics and strategies were created, giving the Mongols a huge advantage in battle. Being able to shoot and charge at any angle, use their surroundings and techniques to hold potential. Remember the reason why the Mongol Empire was so successful, the stirrup.